So today we're going to get over collage fear. What is that? Well, collage fear is when you guys write to me and you say, Oh, I want to make one of those beautiful bracelets on one of those big fat blanks like this. This is a crescent blank, raw brass one from our site. But I'm afraid to use my stuff, and I'm I don't know where to start, and I don't know, and I'm just afraid to do it. And I've watched you do it. And we have had like two videos, maybe on this, but they were a while ago. And if you're new to us, you might not have thought to go back and look at them. But you know what? No problem. This is something I'm really comfortable with because I've done it for a long time, and that doesn't say that I always get it right every time and I don't have to go back and take my stuff apart but the secret is is I use E6000 glue and that glue although it's really really strong and really really tight if you screw up and you do something that you go back and look at it and aesthetically it's not pleasing guess what you can take it apart you've got some cleanup but you can do it so there's nothing to be afraid of I mean it's everything you do can be repaired and there's no right and there's no wrong. What you have to achieve is balance. And that's something I don't know if I can teach you. But I will attempt to show you. And another thing I wanted to tell you today is um, for those who frequent my Facebook page, I'm going to really turn that into a teaching page. I think it's time, don't you? Um, when you submit things, if I see something that I think you know, maybe constructive criticism wise that uh, maybe would have worked better, then I'm going to mention it to you. Some of you, um, I'm, I think you're using too much stuff on your work um, that maybe, you know, it could be kind of expensive for you. It could be broken up and it could be made with a little bit more movement, a little bit more vibe, and a little bit less product. Um, you could use less expensive filler sometimes. Sometimes the work um, is a little um, too simple and maybe with just a couple little things added it could be wow. I want to help you guys make stuff that will sell for you. These are tight times. You need your work to stand apart. We've got what you need at Beast Soup Boutiques to make your work start, stand apart. There's no doubt about it. I have top of the line stuff. But I want to be there for you to, to help you see what to do with them. So if you post something on my Facebook page and I say, love this, love this, love this, but what about this? You know, don't, don't get afraid to put it on there. It's free instruction. If you went in a class, you'd get that, wouldn't you? You would. So I'm going to be there for you, and I'm going to do that for you. And I'll talk about that more on my blog maybe later today. If you have any questions, you can write me. Please write to me at Facebook. That's where I'll see you fastest. Um, you can message me at Brenda Sue Lansdowne. If you write to me at YouTube, I may not see you. Um, I'm having trouble sometimes re responding. I don't know if something wrong with the program or whatever. It doesn't always go through. Don't write to me at YouTube. Write to me either through my website, bisuboutiques.com. That would be cool. Or you can write to me right on my Facebook page at Bisu Boutiques fan page. Or you can write to me, uh, Brenda Sue Lansdowne. So there's plenty of ways to get hold of me. Anyway, let's get to it. Come on over here. I'm going to collage a few pieces, give you some tips, and let's see how far we get. Okay, the first thing a piece like this starts out with is a piece like this okay as you can see this is bent to work on it it doesn't work out too well to keep it bent E6000 the glue of choice in my opinion um, it has enough flex to it that you can bend it back into shape if you're careful so and it does need this curve maybe not quite this much to lay right around the neck so um, what I do when I get these pieces first is I just flatten them as best I can okay to work on them flat is better okay so that's what I've done with this piece now I've got a bunch of uh, inexpensive but really rather colorful and fun buttons laying here on my work table so let's go for it and let's see what we can do with some cheap buttons okay um, what I'm gonna look for is my bottom layer my big stuff your big stuff goes on the bottom so this is kind of a big button, so just get a little bit of glue under the top here and slide it into place. Don't worry about that coming up through those holes because we're going to cover it. Maybe I'll straighten it up. Okay. And it might be best if you didn't work on paper like I am. Do as I say, not as I do. But I'm pretty good at this, so I don't think I'm going to get a lot on the paper. This I made this piece on this paper. 
Okay, here's another piece. I'm going to stagger these a little bit for form, okay? I'm going to put this piece here. You know, you can lay your stuff out first. You know, that's a good idea. I, I would uh, hardly recommend that you do that. Um, here's a small, nah, I don't want to do that. So I'm looking for different colors. I'm going to put this one here and leave a little space in here and I can put fill. What you want to watch on these is that you do not obscure your end holes because that's how you're going to connect it. Okay, so don't do that. Keep them open. You can go close to them or you can go around them, but don't, my dears, go over them. Okay, I'm going to put this guy here. Okay. Those are kind of weird little buttons. Can you see how I'm doing this? I'm only putting the glue on part of it, and yeah, it's showing through there, but it's, it's no big deal because we're going to cover that. I'm not really sure how yet because I have not planned this. I'm just messing with it, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go for medium-sized buttons. Oh, this one's kind of cute. It's got a little bit of a thing, so I'm going to kind of put it right over here. I'm going to move this down so I don't have as much. I don't like to see pieces like this that have metal showing through. I don't want to see this blank. Now that's me. I'm not saying that it's wrong to let the blank show. I'm not. You do what you want. But as for me, if it's a piece I'm making, this metal, I do not want it showing. Here's another piece that will work. When I'm done with this, I want this metal covered. It might have a little bit showing right here at the ends where I'm going to hook in. Now see, I gotta watch because it's moving over and I, I can still get in there. Now, it's really hard to do this with keeping it completely off your hands and I've preached that over and over again. Keep a rag by you so you can keep wiping it off. Don't eat while you do this. Don't drink while you do this. No drinking in the workshop, okay? Okay. Well, coffee, but not when you're using your 6,000. The other drinking I'll leave up to you. We all need a margarita sometimes, right? Some may beg to differ. I don't know. I'm not a big drinker. Me and a margarita, I don't know. I know I couldn't probably teach you very well. <laughs> anyway, see how I'm just filling in? I'm just searching for stuff. You know, I'm just kind of seeing, okay, yeah, this will go. Now, I'm going to tilt this one. You know, you don't have to have everything all flat. I'm going to tilt that and get... A little bit of dimension into it. Um, maybe I'll put this here. See, I'm already going up to my second layer. So you do collage in layers. Oh, this one's got, what does it say? Tote, tote, tape, uh, lay. Le, this is, okay, somebody will have to correct me because I don't speak French. Lole, what was this? Is this I? O E, well, whatever. If I go to France, I'm going to have to learn some French, right? Actually, I know like 300 words, but I cannot say it. My second language is Spanish. If you're Spanish-speaking, feel free to write to me in Spanish. I can conduct business in Spanish, not in French. We're going to be using Babelfish. <laughs> I, I manage Portuguese, too. Look at that. That goes right down in there. Okay. Um, this guy's a little... You know, let's put him on here because he's going to cover some stuff up and that's a good thing I love these colors they are pretty 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 miss. but you see how I'm going with this I mean like who can't do this right don't tell me you can't do this don't tell me you're afraid I'm going to come over there and smack you good night someday we'll have to have a class someplace I don't know where I don't know where but do you see how this is going, guys? What is hard about this? Come on. You know, if I had more time, I'd be spending a little bit more time with this, and I would be fussing with it a little bit more. Now I'm going to do something interesting. I have these Tim Holtz trink trinket keys. So this one says, what does it say? Findings. Oh, yes, I'm the findings queen. So maybe I'll put the findings right here. Now how am I going to get this on here with that glue showing? Well, not well, but see, I will put something else over that to mask the glue. And also another thing you could do is a thin coat of ice resin at the end, diamond glaze, stuff like that, and that glosses over some glue showing. So, anyway, 
I'm thinking of you, Hillary, as I make this because you're the sewer. And I'm using all this sewing stuff. Actually, you know, I was a pretty good seamstress in my own time. Probably not as good as Hillary, but then again, I never saw a dress she made yet, so I guess my jury's out. But she is pretty dang good. This is Thoughts. We might have Hillary do some um, videos for us someday with um, the fiber stuff because she is the queen of fiber. Anyway... Yeah, I made my husband's suits and everything, so I've sewed on many a button. Now, you know, Jordan, he comes over here. Mom, will you sew on my button? I don't know how. And I'm like, what is this? You can't sew a button on. How dumb is that? But maybe I shouldn't say anything because maybe some of you guys can't sew a button. Anyway, here's some old sewing stuff that I have. I love snaps. I love to integrate a snap into my work. I'm going to put that guy on there. Um, here's a black one. Black sometimes makes your design pop. You know how they say when you're decorating, put a little bit of black into a room because a um, room will tend to float if there's no black in it? Did you ever hear that? It's true. So a little black in your design kind of anchors it. I'm not saying you got to do it. Some, you know, you might be doing a bridal design, in which case you're not going to be using black in there. Well, <laughs> I don't know if they're a gothic wedding, so maybe you will be. Um, but generally, no, you don't do that. But you see how I'm going? This is not perfect, guys. I'm doing this quick. Hey, here's a steampunk element. Why not? Why the hey not? Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Okay, it's in there. Right there? It's in there like prego. All right, now, truth be told, if I was to continue with this and finish it, which I will off camera... Um, this thing's going to be loaded with chotch, but you see how I got to this point? The only, the only metal I've got showing in here is right here, which I will deal with, but I'm not going to right now because I have too many other things to show you. So, that having been said, I am going to carefully see. I only got, that's the only glue I got on here. How about that? All right, here's the cuff. As you can see, this has only begun. I uh, have a colored cuff, or dimpled cuff, which I love to work with. I started by laying down, these are old buttons, mother pearls, which I love. Put my little nutty squirrels, which you'll find here, chatty squirrels. That's on the site, by the way, we carry this piece. And I layered some rhinestone chain. And you might say, well, be Sue, rhinestone chain, how do I get rhinestone chain on there? Well, I got some rhinestone chain here. In fact, this just came in today, and I just sent some out to a friend who is going to be doing a class with this chain out in Costa Mesa. If any of you guys are out that way, I don't know if you can still get in the class. It's going to be at Create It. Is it Create It? Anyway, to show you how to get some chain around something, let's see if you get around there. Okay, you kind of have to lay it on there and see how much you need and then eyeball it, which I'm doing. It clips apart really easy. Now, getting the glue on rhinestone chain is another thing altogether. And I'm going to try to do this very, very quickly because pretty soon Rob's going to be telling me, I'm pretty out right of time. Talk too much, do too much. <laughs> yeah, Rob thinks it's funny. I don't know if I have enough on this, but I'm going to just show you kind of quick. You want the stones facing up. If you got them on the side, it's probably wrong. Let's see if I can do it right. Probably not on camera. Probably not. Now they are on the side. Why well, is it wrong? I don't know. You decide. But anyway, now if I had my, I didn't measure this long enough. But nice and chain will it will stretch out a bit. I might be able to get that in there. Okay. Okay. I got rhinestone chain around there. Did you see how I did it? Just use this. Went on the back of it. I I do prefer to have my stones pointing up. Yeah, that didn't have bad. Who says it's wrong? Right? Who says it's wrong? So I'm going to put this around. This will be a bodacious cuff when I'm done. In my day, I've done many cuffs. Cuffs are fussy. It's another video. Um, I could see you being a little worried about doing a cuff because you got to do it in stages or everything rolls off. Um, but this, this is flat. This is like, it's so dang darn flat in front of you. I mean, just get your stuff, line it up, then position it, and then start gluing it on. If you use my technique about only putting glue on part of the backing, you're cool. You're good to go. This one, of course, had this mount in the middle. And it's pronged in on a bezel. And here he's going to tap me in a second. 
I'm going to show you real quick. Everybody wants to know how did I make this chain. This is gypsy beaded. I'm just going to tell you real quick and it's going to be another video. But basically, you put your 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 beads on a eye pin or even a head pin, clip it off and nip it. Who says you got to have an eye pin? All you need is a piece of wire. Make your own. I used our hammered bead and link chain from the website. Two equal size links, lengths of it. And then I made lengths of gypsy beaded beads on a head pin, which gypsy beaded just means they're connected by a jump, so they have movement. I love stuff with movement. I hate stiff stuff. And then every so often, I just looped through the chain, and it made this lovely scalloped appearance. So I'm going to do this last link here real quick. See if I can do it on camera real quick without my fingers shaking all that, because he's, he's hurrying me, guys. I'm going through this link here. I'm going through this link here. Now I'm going through this link. Yeah, it's positioned right. Using my jumpy tool turner, closing it, and voila, it's in there. So you know what it is? It's tinking and messing. That's what it is. But wouldn't this make a pretty bracelet too? But this is just the same size as this. That's how I did it. So we'll do another video on gypsy beading. But for now, if you want to play with it, that's the basic concept. Stack them on an eye pin and turn it, and then join your sections with jump rings. Oval the best. If you can double jump ring, it's, it's even better because it makes it stronger. That's it for this week. And next week, maybe we'll go on with this. Feel free to write me. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention, if you want, I would like to ask some maybe to write me some essays by sending them to me through my website of why you want to improve in your work. And I will acknowledge as many of them as I can. One is going to get pulled and one of them is going to be the recipient of a whole mess of D-stash because I'm going to clean this off. It doesn't mean you're getting all this stuff, but you're going to get a big bag of D-stash if you touch my heart. So please touch my heart about why you want to improve in your work and make it because of, of artistic senses. I know a lot of us are fighting illnesses, depression, anxiety. I got all that, guys. I'm right there with you. I want to hear why you want to improve in your work for artistic reasons and how you want to improve and how it's going to make your life better. Write to me about that and somebody's going to win a box of junk. Just wanted to mention to you guys too, you know how I mentioned about write to me little essays and I'm going to pick one and touch my heart and all that. You know, just because you don't get picked doesn't mean you didn't touch my heart. You know, you're all special to me. I want your ideas. And somebody's going to benefit from that because I'm going to clean this mess up and I'm, I'm going to give it to them. And, and you know, I think too I'm going to say with that it's going to come with a little responsibility. Because when I do that and I, if, you, if you get picked, I want to see what you made with this stuff. I want to be your teacher and I want to see what you made with it. I can't guide you every step of the way of every journey, but I am interested in you. And whoever wins this, I want to see their stuff. Uh, if you want, you can paste it at the Facebook page. If you, you have URLs, if you have an Etsy or an Art Fire, whatever, I'll post that for you too. I would like you to write to me, and I would like to get it before I go to New York on my buy trip. Everybody else is going to be here, but I'll be gone that week. So um, maybe get it to me like uh, by May 25th. You have that long, okay? Business is going to go on as usual. People are going to be in the house. I'm not flying the coop entirely. Nobody ever is always gone from here. Somebody is always here um, to take care of you. But I am going to New York to buy vintage. So we're going to have cool stuff. Uh, so maybe one of you is going to win. And I'm really interested in seeing what you have to say. Okay? So let's have it be about you know you as an artist, where you want to go. And how you think I can help you. Okay? And and we'll pick one and you'll get my knee stash. Alright? Alright.